Hi everyone, my name is Kerry, and in today's episode of What AIO Loves About the Ocean, I'm going to talk about marine renewable energy. Before we get into how marine renewable energy is created, let's talk about why it's so important. Beginning with the Industrial Revolution in the 1760s and intensifying with urbanization in the early to mid 20th century, humans have been using up our non-renewable energy sources such as coal and oil to create all of our electricity. These sources are called non-renewable because there is only a certain amount of them on Earth. Once we use all of our oil and gas, we will not be able to get any more. Not only are we at risk of running out of non-renewable energy resources, these ways of producing energy also contribute to something called climate change. I'm sure you've heard of climate change before, but you might not know what it means. Climate change means that there's been a change to the average conditions on Earth, in this case making the Earth warmer than usual. Although the Earth has had periods of change over its 4.5 billion years of existence, scientists are currently worried that human activities have caused the world to heat much faster than it has ever heated before. This can cause problems such as sea level rise, shrinking of glaciers, and changes to the lifestyles of plants and animals around the world. Non-renewable energy sources can add to this climate change because burning them to produce electricity creates a specific type of pollution called greenhouse gases. These greenhouse gases are a problem in climate change because they act like a bubble around the world keeping heat inside of the bubble. This is one of the main reasons why the world is getting warmer and why climate change is happening. I know this might sound scary, but the good news is there are scientists all over the world working to find new ways we can create electricity. One of those ways is by harnessing the power of the ocean. Renewable energy is different from non-renewable energy because the source that creates the electricity never goes away. In non-renewable energy, the Earth only has a small amount of coal and oil on it, and these sources cannot be created. Alternatively, renewable energy uses sources such as the sun and wind to create energy. The Earth will never run out of either of these resources, so we don't have to worry about finding a new vein of coal or a new pool of oil like we do right now. Also, sun and wind don't need to be burned like coal and oil do, so they don't produce pollution in the same way as non-renewable energy resources. Okay, now that we know why renewable energy is important, let's learn how energy is created. How about we start with something simple like charging your phone? You plug your phone into the cord and the cord into the outlet and magically it starts charging, right? Well, actually, the process is anything but simple. The electricity flowing from the outlet had to go through a series of steps in order to reach your house. These steps are called infrastructure, which you probably know of as power lines, and it's how electricity reaches your home from the power plant. In the power plant, a fuel, usually coal or oil, is burned, and this heat is used to boil water and create steam. This steam then turns a fan, and this fan spins a bundle of copper wires through a magnetic field, creating electricity. If that was too much for you, don't worry, I'm sure you're not alone. What you need to know is that electricity is created when a mechanical or moving force, in this case the fan spinning, creates an electric force. Okay, now let's apply this new knowledge to three different types of marine renewable energy. The first type of energy we're going to talk about is one that you most likely know of, wind energy. Towering high above the waves, wind turbines harness vast amounts of energy from ocean breezes. Humans have been harnessing wind energy in the form of transportation for hundreds of years on sailboats. However, now we're able to turn that same wind into electricity. The blades of the turbine rotate with the wind, and this is the mechanical force that creates electricity. This electricity is then sent to the shore along power lines on the seafloor and is used to power houses and businesses. Wind energy is the most understood and best developed type of marine renewable energy currently available. It's also very commonly used in many other parts of the world, such as Europe. The World Ocean Review predicts that if the world was to use wind energy in as many places as the turbines are able, we would create enough energy to power one-third of the world's population. Our next type of renewable energy we're going to be talking about is wave energy. Wave energy adds another step to wind turbines in order to create energy. While the wind turbines are directly turned by atmospheric wind, or the wind you feel every day, wave energy is created when water from waves pushes air out of chamber as the water rises and falls. As the air is pushed out, the wind created spins a fan which creates electricity. Wave energy is not as well understood or developed as wind energy. However, the World Ocean Review predicts that at full capacity, wave energy could create 10% of the world's electricity. This is a super cool new type of renewable energy with different designs being created in really imaginative ways. One of my favorite designs is the Palamic Sea Snake, which was used off of the coast of Scotland. This machine uses the movements of the waves to flex and bend joints on a long tube. 
You've probably experienced this type of motion if you've ever floated on top of the water at the beach as the waves went under you. In the same way that your body goes up and down with the waves, Palamis does that as well. The stronger the waves, the more energy is created. Although most wave energy designs are still in early stages, this is an exciting up-and-coming type of renewable energy. The final type of renewable energy we are going to be discussing is tidal energy. Tidal energy uses a fan in the same way that wind energy does. However, instead of air spinning the fan, water spins it. These fans are placed underwater in tidal areas and are turned by the water in both directions, coming in and going out as the tide also comes in and out. In Brittany, France, there has been a tidal power plant in place since 1996. This single power plant produces about the same amount of energy as a typical gas or oil powered plant of the same size. This type of renewable energy is not as commonly used because scientists haven't agreed if the renewable energy produced is worth the possible impact the power plant could have on the environment surrounding it. Although marine renewable energy is significantly better than non-renewable sources in terms of pollution, it is important to remember that any structure put into the ocean is bound to have an impact on the environment that is being placed into. Wind energy can have an impact on birds, and wave and tidal energy can impact fish species and migration patterns of marine animals. Teams of scientists spend years monitoring the area chosen for energy creation before any work begins, and continue to monitor the area after structures are put in place. This is done to make sure there is not too heavy of an environmental impact. All of environmental science is a trade-off, but making careful scientific decisions, marine renewable energy can make an incredible difference in our pollution outputs as a world. Additionally, it can help reduce our contribution to climate change. These three types of renewable energy are the most commonly used around the world. However, they're just the tip of the iceberg of renewable energy types being considered. Scientists are currently working to create energy using currents, temperature shifts in the ocean, and even the salt of the ocean itself. Marine renewable energy is a fascinating and important new type of energy that has the potential to change the way the world creates energy for the better. This type of energy will be among those that your generation will be taking over and expanding on to help in the fight against climate change. I hope you enjoyed this segment of What AIO Loves About the Ocean. If you'd like more information on AIO, visit the website at acadiainstitute.com and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next video. Thanks!